name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good morning, and a very warm welcome to Mass. Today's first hymn points us back to Good Friday, of course. It's not that we've got it wrong, it's the idea that the Paschal mystery, the mysteries of Easter, is Good Friday and Easter Sunday together forms the central mystery of our faith, that the Lord has died, the Lord has risen, and the Lord will come again. So we place ourselves at the foot of the cross, but in the light of the resurrection, and bring our sins, our brokenness before Him, seeking His mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise thee, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. For Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. You take away the sins of the world, receive our Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One. So let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant, Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold, when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response psalm is lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. Lift up the light of your face, O Lord. It is the Lord who grants favours to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say, Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Reading from the first letters of St. John. I'm writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please stand to the gospel affirmation. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you. The disciples told the story of what had happened on the road and how they recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourself. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. The joy was so great that they could not believe it. And they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, this is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Word. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's always a pity that the Gospel always comes last because the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel of Luke are written by the same author, traditionally the Evangelist Luke, the companion of St. Paul. So really, the Gospel is written and then he writes the Acts of the Apostles. The most important thing for all of us here today is the resurrection. The fact of the resurrection, the experience of the resurrection, and the proclamation of the re resurrection. So today, today's little extract from the Gospel follows on from the road to Emmaus, which is only to be found in Luke's Gospel. And Jesus once more appears with his disciples this time very physically, being able to eat and be touched and all of those things. And one of the things that happened in the life of the early church was they went into the Old Testament, because it was the only Bible they had, was the, the Torah, the writings, the Psalms, the prophets. And they went in and they looked to find Jesus there. That Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, was to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament in particular, that the Messiah was to suffer. Now, you'll get that in the Old Testament. It's a sort of a descant rather than the principal theme, but it's there. That the Messiah was to suffer. And so you see Jesus in the Gospel today opening this up to them, helping them on their way, if you like, and then telling them that they will preach the gospel of repentance, preach the gospel that will bring men and women into relationship with God, correct relationship with God again, beginning in Jerusalem. Jump to the Acts of the Apostles, after the coming of the and the descent of the Holy Spirit, there we have Peter out there. It's only chapter 3 in the Acts of the Apostles, so it's very early on, and he's out there giving it loudly in the streets of Jerusalem. Now remember, he could be arrested, his follower, his leader, just a few months before, has been crucified, fear and trembling, now filled with the experience of the Holy Spirit, the power of the resurrection and the experience of the Holy Spirit, he's out preaching. But it's a very difficult one, because he has to begin with the fact that you guys killed your Messiah. So he has to begin with the bad news. You guys, your leaders, let Barabbas go free, and you crucified the innocent one. If Jesus had just been a prophet, there it would have ended. One more prophet gone to his death at the hands of a foreign power. But there he is, and he has having to preach this. But note the last bit. You didn't know what you were doing. Jesus' life, his teaching, his death and his resurrection were God's plan. And you might have been blind in doing it, but all you were doing was fulfilling God's plan. Now, Christians have been hating of Jews for millennia because they killed the Messiah, but we've forgotten that bit. That in fact, the Jewish leaders were only instruments. Pilate was only an instrument. The Romans were only instruments in God's moment of human salvation. So he goes out with all the strength and the power of the resurrection, taking his life in his hands in the streets of Jerusalem, telling them that the Messiah that they killed unwittingly in his death brings about peace and reconciliation. That that's the moment when reconciliation happens. Letter of St. John, he'll pick up this theme that Jesus' death 
is one that the last and the greatest of all the sacrifices that bring about peace. Again, if you remember in the temple, you would have various offerings, offerings for a new life, and you had a sin offerings where nothing else could take away your sin and your brokenness except some sacrifice to God, some meaningful sacrifice to God. And so the New Testament writers look at Jesus' death and say, there is the last and the final sacrifice, Jesus' death on the cross. And it's an encounter with Jesus dying on the cross that our sins are forgiven. If you don't meet Jesus on the cross, you will not move on to the resurrection. If you don't pick up your own cross and follow Jesus, you will not end up at the resurrection. But it's Jesus risen from the dead that convinces us of that. It's Jesus himself who evangelizes, even today. It's only when you encounter the risen Jesus that you know it to be true. Otherwise, it's just ideas or somebody else's ideas. It's Jesus risen from the dead that's possible to be met, known, and loved, and followed now that makes the difference. We're not very good at pro proclaiming the gospel. We forgot how to do it. Because, you see, for basically 1,800 years, kids were brought up in the faith, baptized, brought up in the faith, received confirmation, received Holy Communion, and that was it. Then their kids, and then their kids, and then their kids, and then their kids, till about 50 or 60 years ago, when it all changed. Well, for whatever reason, something broke. Perhaps it was the Second World War. Perhaps the trauma of the Second World War, the First World War, Second World War. But that link to faith that we have in the Western world was broken, is broken. So that old pattern of giving the sacraments and people simply following the Lord by following the church and the faith, that's over. It's over. We have to go back to a much older period when the gospel had to be shared and preached and talked about and thought through and lived. Very different days. But that's where we've got to go to. The kerygma, the proclamation that Jesus has died for our sins, has risen from the dead, and is there available not only to forgive our sins, but to help us on the journey, to help us on our life's journey, to accompany us on that journey as we make the choices we need to make. How do we do it again? So, there's a variety of ways. The Alpha course is about looking at the very core basis of our faith, the Bible story, and therefore we need to we acquaint ourselves with the Bible story, the Spirit of God speaking through the words of Scripture. But another way that it happens, and again, we've lost it. It's a strange old thing. We've lost it since the Second Vatican Council. When most of you were growing up, well, at least when some of you are growing up, benediction, spending time in silent prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament was a means of evangelization. Jesus himself spoke to our hearts. You didn't have to be a Catholic. There was nothing to receive. There was nothing that excluded you. You could be there, you yourself with a personal faith in front of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And it's being rediscovered that Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament evangelizes. It's a place that you can invite people to where there's no exclusion, there's no final barrier that says you can't receive it. So we've got to try and think again. Like the old Catholic way was the Blessed Sacrament itself, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, the risen Christ evangelized. And the older way still was the proclamation of the gospel, the proclamation of the kerygma, the core truths. And we have to rediscover both. So I'm not asking you all to become Protestants. I'm asking you that we've got to rediscover an earlier form of the Catholic faith and that old and traditional way through the 17th, 18th, and 19th century that Christ in the sacraments evangelized on our behalf. Strange thing happening in Musselboro. Uh, and we 
we, we can't take any credit at all, these kids from Musselburgh Grammar starting to come to Mass. Uh, and a soldier walking through the door asking to come to Mass and be baptised. Now we can take no credit for that. The Holy Spirit's out there doing it himself. But we are meant to cooperate with him. We are meant there to help him in that journey of bringing men and women to Christ. And in fact, as Christians, uh, you know, we, have, we will be answerable for the fact that we don't do it because it's a commandment, not to priests and bishops and apostles and all that. It's a commandment to all Christians to go and make disciples. But let me tell you this. You can't make a disciple unless you're a disciple yourself. You can't become an apostle, somebody who's sent to make disciples, unless you become a disciple and learned, and then can be sent. So again, I'll commend the Alpha course to you, but it doesn't just have to be the Alpha course. Learning to say the rosary is a way of re-encountering Christ. Trying to find a way of how we come back to benediction is a way of encountering Christ. But nonetheless, we have to know our faith a little bit more confidently if we were ever going to confidently share it with others. And rather strangely, there are people of the next generation who are beginning to ask questions because they know nothing of Christ and they know nothing of the church and they know nothing of faith. And that means they're in a position to be able to ask questions afresh and therefore we need to be able to in some way answer them. So let's stand and profess her. I believe in God. ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the union of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Jesus continues to call us to repentance so that God's love can come to perfection in us. We pray for the Pope's intentions for April, for all women that their dignity may be respected and their lives be free of all discrimination. Christ hear us. Christ, Christ gracious hear us. Hear us. We pray for the release of all the Israeli hostages and of the Palestinians held in prison without being charged of any crime. Christ hear us. Christ, Christ gracious hear us. We pray for the end of all wars, violence and terrorism in the Holy Land, Ukraine, Haiti, Myanmar, Nigeria, Yemen and South Sudan. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. We pray for each other that like the disciples with our minds opened and grace with forgiveness, we can be witnesses to the risen Christ in the daily circumstances of our lives. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. We pray for our faithful departed, for Sonny Glenn who died recently, and for all whose anniversaries fall this week, may they rest in peace. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Moment of silence then, we bring our own prayers before the Lord. I offer this Mass in particular for the repose of the soul of Anna Kerr, whose anniversary falls at this time. Can I also ask for your prayers for Father Andy Monaghan, who died recently and whose funeral is tomorrow. And we commend Anna and all whom we love to the prayers of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hail Mary, Mary full of Lord grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Lord Jesus, empower us to witness to the Father's love by the way in which we live in the world, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the glory of his Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Leo our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, with St. Martin of Tours, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. So let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So, I've mentioned the Alpha course. You'll see it in the newsletter, and you'll see sheets that look like this at the back. Please take it away. Take as many as you like. Um, and if you wish to come along, then please just let us know by filling in the form, and we'll get more details to you. Uh, also, of course, uh, next weekend is Good Shepherd Sunday, the time that we're praying for vacations to the religious life and the priesthood. There'll be a special collection taken for seminarian training. Uh, so, again, it's a good Sunday to come to church, but also we should be praying for vacations. Uh, the church needs priests, and our diocese in particular needs priests, particularly homegrown ones, if you like. You'll see uh, Sonny's funeral is on Thursday the 25th at 10 a.m., and he'll be received into church on Wednesday the 24th at 4.30. Please continue to pray for him and his family. Confirmation. Uh, We'll get the message out, but we'll like all primary seven kids who are going to be confirmed here next week and the week after that. So it's only really two Sundays before confirmation. So it's coming on very quickly, and we need to sort of just talk to them as well, uh, as well as we prepare for uh, confirmation with the Archbishop present, of course, here in Trement. St. Vincent de Paul Society, again, its work is important in our community, particularly times of uh, financial stringency, so please uh, be as generous as you can as you leave. But also there'll be a box there, and I saw some stuff in it, for Women's Aid uh, in East Lothian. And again, it's a very, very useful charity. You'll see the sort of things that they're looking for in the lists there. Also, there's a prayer for vacations. Take the newsletter away and try to remember to use it to pray for them. I think that's everything, other than there are teas and coffees in the hall after Mass. And you're all very welcome to go across. Finally, confirmation cards, First Holy Communion cards and gifts are now in sale in the porch. <sighs> it wouldn't be a mass if I never tried to sell you something. <laughs> so I can ask you to stand and bow your heads for God's blessing. 
May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing. Amen. Amen. May He, who by rede His redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. said it would be all over the world there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea all over the land the spirit said it would be all over this land there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea all over the church the spirit is moving all Thank you. 